we are here to talk about the prediction profiler. So what is the purpose of the prediction profiler? Well, it's a great way to visualize and explore models and a great tool to help make decisions around those models. And there's lots of different types of data that we can use to generate prediction models. Um, certainly with DOE, right, we're after that underlying mathematical equation that, that describes the relationship between our DOE factors and our DOE responses. We can also be building prediction models from observational data. Uh, maybe you're trying to understand a manufacturing process better and you're going out and gathering historical data from a manufacturing process. Um, so that's another type of data that can be used. Um, we can also use prediction profiles, uh, profiler with any formula. So if you have a formula saved to a column, um, you can use the prediction profiler. The prediction profiler is available in over 20 platforms in Jump. So you're going to see it in a lot of different places. Um, and then, of course, if you have your formula saved as a column in your data table, you can go right to the graph menu and there's an option to open up the profiler. So that's a quick introduction to the prediction profiler. And this is a two part series. Um, so today, what I want to talk about is, you know, just some of the logistics, the functionality of the profiler itself for visualizing and exploring your opportunity space, or in other words, exploring your, your model. And then I want to talk about some different ways that you can change the appearance within the profiler, and then how you can share it with your colleagues. Next week, when we come back, we can talk about finding optimum conditions and some more advanced topics. Let's start with the default layout. So here is a prediction profile. Um, this is from the infamous tablet data. So let's first start with some basic terminology and what we're talking about. So on the prediction profiler, you have a graph for each of the X's or the inputs in your model. And there's lots of different ways that we can refer to our X and our Y. An X could be a factor from your DOE input variable, your X column, your independent variable, your term, a process parameter, right? So lots of different ways we can refer to what's displayed on the X axis. I'll probably be um, using some of these different terms as we go. And then we have our Y variable. So this is, you know, our, a response in DOE, an output variable, the dependent variable, the outcome of interest when building a prediction model. So what we have here is a profile trace that represents the relationship for each combination of our X and Y. And the black line on the profile trace represents how changes in your X variable impact your Y variable. And then the gray shaded area here around these uh, four variables, which happen to be numeric continuous variables, are the confidence interval around um, that relationship between the X and the Y. Here, screen size, this is a categorical variable. Um, I believe it's, it's either nominal or ordinal in the data table. And so we have, um, you know, since it's a categorical variable, um, we have error bars associated with uh, the mean response for each level of this categorical variable. So at the moment, we have screen size set at three. And so the vertical dashed line is at three, a blend time around 15. Let's actually click on that and get it right to a round number. Uh, blend speed is 60, a coating viscosity of 99, and a spray rate, let's round that to 400. Right, so with each of those set points or each of these X values, 
the predicted dissolution is just around 74. And with the confidence interval around that, um, we can see it's 73 to about 76. So this blue text here represents the confidence interval around the predicted response. Now it's important to keep in mind that this is the confidence interval for the predicted mean. It's not where I would expect individual results. These are actually the confidence interval for the predicted mean. One of the things that's new in JUMP18 is we can also see the prediction interval for individual values. So if we go to the red triangle, there's now also an option for the prediction interval. And so now we can see that shaded area has expanded out to these green lines. And our air bars, now we have these green area air bars, which have expanded beyond our confidence interval. And that's where we would expect future results, right? So that's really important to understand the difference between the confidence inter interval for the expected mean versus the prediction interval for an individual result. All right, so I'm gonna turn off my prediction intervals just to keep things a little bit simple here. All right, so that's the basics around uh, the default layout for the prediction profiler. So let's first talk about one way that we can use the prediction profiler. Well, it's a great way to really understand our model. So really what factors are important? So let's start with that. How do we know which factors are important in our model? Well, we can look at essentially the steepness of each one of these curves. Out here for spray rate, for example, we can see this is a very steep curve, which means that as we vary spray rate, we are gonna get a difference in our dissolution. So this is probably a very important factor in our model. Um, likewise here, we can see with screen size, we're getting a decrease in the average dissolution. So this is probably also an important factor. Um, we can also start to really understand what could potentially also be significant, right? So spray rate is probably significant. Right, so main effect for a continuous X um, is represented by a slope. Main effect for a categorical X is represented here by the mean difference. Now, in terms of a quadratic term in our model, we can start to look for curvature here in our relationship between our X and our Y. So we're definitely seeing some curvature here between blend time and dissolution. So probably there's a quadratic effect here. So a nonlinear relationship between blend time and dissolution. Um, same thing here for coating viscosity. We see that nonlinear relationship. However, for blend speed, pretty flat line, right? So probably not a significant mean effect, probably not a significant quadratic effect either. And for spray rate here, um, the line is straight. However, we have a pretty steep slope. So the main effect is probably significant, but we probably don't have a significant quadratic effect. So we can start to make some assumptions about our, our statistical model, right? When we're looking at the prediction profile. 